Hello and welcome to Robin Minds. My name is Hero Daniels. Many thanks for joining us. Since assumption of office, President Bola Ahmed Tinibu has implemented a plethora of policies aimed at revitalizing Nigeria's economic and social landscape. Now, two notable decisions were the removal of fuel subsidy and the flotation of the Naira. Now, as great as Mr. President's intentions are, the effects have been increased debt burden to a tune of 121 trillion naira, rising inflation and unequal distribution of resources. You would agree with me that fuel prices have risen faster than Ijebu Gari. The NMPC sells at 897 naira per liter, with many filling stations selling above 1,000 naira. This has cost further such the price of goods and services. Small businesses are struggling. The middle class no longer exists. It's either you're rich or you're poor. The good side to this, some may say, is that there is reduction in traffic as many people cannot afford to drive their cars. Marriage lists now include gallons of fuel. So if you wanted to get married, instead of buying cola nuts to give to your future father-in-law, just buy 50 liters of fuel and you're good. As Nigeria navigates this complex landscape, it is very crucial to examine the impact of Tinubu's policies on the country's growth, exploring both the successes and the shortcomings. So to discuss bad policies, to discuss President Bola Ahmed Tinubu's policies and the growth of Nigeria, um, I have with me in the studio a business strategist Oluwashino Akin Remy. Welcome to the program. Yeah, nice having me. Yeah. Also joining us virtually is an African affairs analyst in the person of Anoba Ibrahim. Welcome to the program as well. So we're going to dive straight into it. Um, I'm going to start with you, Shino. Um, okay. Where are we as a country? You know, we've seen a rise in inflation. We've seen a rise at the full prices. How did we get here? Okay. Yeah, nice, Ruben. Basically, like if you have this in your intro, there are two key things that have basically brought us to where we are. In as much as these two policies are needed by Nigeria as a country, however, I think we should understand the important thing we should be looking at is, are we ripe for those policy? Was it Im implemented in the right way? So talking about these two things, we are we going to be looking at the full subsidy for removal and also the protection of NERA. In as much as removal of subsidy is a very brilliant idea that needs to happen at one point in time as a country. However, the how and when was a major key, which I think has been a major bone in the neck of everyone in the country. So basically these two, and also removing first subsidy, and at the same time, putting your nera, Nigeria, the economy does not seem to be ripe for those two policies at the same time. So those two policies has a ripple effect on what we are seeing today as a country. So the argument was, the reason why we want to take out this subsidy is because we want to use this immense money that has been benefiting the elites and invest in infrastructure. That's, that was the whole idea. That was the reason why the presidency decided to take away the subsidy so that they can invest in the infrastructure. And, you know, the president keeps saying that we need to take the hard decision so that we can move the nation forward. Now, do you think that that money has been well invested? Now, so, so well, thank you. Is it is well said that subsidy money needs to be removed and invest in the right sector like our education, healthcare, and the likes just for the overall good of the nation. However, we should be asking ourselves, where are we? What has been done? Recently, there has been a lot of issues there and there around we are, the government the still paying subsidy. So the question is that there is a lot of unclarity, uncertainty around this whole subsidy issue. And also the transparency by the government around it is a key factor. So which has kind of played a major role as to how the citizen perceive what's going on. So one thing is that policy might be good, policy might be right. The question is how are these policies being communicated? How are they being implemented? What's the posture of the government in, in ensuring that the citizens are on the same path with them? Making a decision is part of every country that I need to make. But the question is that how are those decisions being taken? What's the transparency of the government around those making decisions? I think though these are some of the few concerns that we need to look at. Let's let's hear what Ibrahim has to say. Ibrahim, what are your thoughts on President Ahmed Bola Tinibu's economic policies? Thank you, Euro. So so it's not too much of a of a rocket science that subsidy at some point had to go. I think what is now a question is, it's been how many months now since the removal of subsidy? 
what we need to ask ourselves, and of course, Mr. President, is where are those monies that were saved, apparently? Where are those monies? Because they were supposed to be reinvested into the economy, into infrastructure, into health care and education. But I do not think Nigerians will be asking too much questions if we are visibly seeing the effects of those saved money. So if the president will be able to tell us how much has been saved, in what way have those been spent judiciously, I guess it's going to offer some soccer to Nigerians. But mm. if we cannot see that, then I think it's going to be a problem uh, regarding how efficient as the removal of subsidy subsidy been. But also, what about the palliative that were said to be given to the states or to some leaders across the country to ease the pressure on Nigerians? I do not think many of us will agree that those palliatives have gone to where they should go. If anything at all, we've had numerous stories about the politicization of those palliative measures. And as much as the spotlight is on the president as well, I think the governors also need to be asked many questions because I mean, there are numerous measures within each state government uh, strategy book that is supposed to alleviate or ease many of the problems we are seeing now that the subsidy has been removed. So as much as we want to blame the president, I think the governors also need to look clearly at themselves. All right. And um, that was a very well put together thought. I just want to speak to another analyst. Uh, joining us is a policy analyst, Chike Chude. Welcome to the program. So, Chiki, I'm going to dive in head straight. I'm going to, yeah. going to dive in head straight. Um, you just heard Ibrahim say that the removal of subsidy wasn't really the issue. The issue is how has the money that has been saved been implemented? In fact, if there's anything, our debt profile has actually gone up to 121 trillion naira, um, as opposed to going down. Uh, so, what do you make of President Bola Metinibu's economic policies? <laughs> The removal of the subsidy is a problem. I respectfully disagree with my uh, colleague at the other end. It's a problem, and that is the opinion of most Nigerians. And that's why a lot of Nigerians are saying, you know, that there should be a reversal. And again, don't also forget that uh, when the president made that statement, recent, uh, I mean, subsequent revelations have showed that uh, the president, that the APC, what they had in mind was not that level, that removal of the entire subsidy regime, whatever it was at that time, that it was supposed to be done in phases. But the president perhaps carried away by the moment, you know, uh, announced, you know, removal completely. Now, uh, you ask yourself whether a lot of thought had went into this before the president made that statement. Because you're talking about policy, a very serious, you know, policy decision. Now, when policy is being made, if there is a basis for that. You must have looked at it in so many ways, you know, and, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, look at the pros and cons, the downside and then the upside and the rest. And then on that basis, you make your decision. And so, uh, for the president to have just gone there and then just made that statement when it was not something that was agreed, uh, that led to. Now, let's look at the areas in the economy where would say that President Tinubu has improved. Now, is there any area, so let's even talk about what the government has done right. So is there any area you think that the presidency has actually really worked on and we're seeing the results? Okay. Yeah, if, to me, I think I will say as we can, I've seen some, some of the conversations around insecurity, trying to redesign this Securities architect, then also the conversation around state policing is also a highly welcome initiative in the midst of call the insecurity that we are having in this country. However, as good as some of this conversation are, as good as some of this idea are, the question is that it are basically translated into anything that the common man can see. They, they are seeing a lot of kidnappings there and there on a daily basis. Seem as though things are not being done at all. So we could see that there are some ideas on the table by the government, there are some conversation around all this. Again. But the question is that these things are yet to yield the fruit that every common man could say, thank you. Okay, okay. All right, um, I'm going to get back to Achike uh, Chude. So uh, let's, let's pick it up from where you left off. So you, uh, you have the school yes, of thought uh, that... The, yes, continue, please. Yeah, I think that was... Uh, 
I think that was network issue. So look, the reality is that um, everything that has happened in the country is a as a result of that, you know, one sentence statement by the president. Subsidy is gone. Every other thing, every crisis that you are seeing in this country, the cost of living crisis and so many other associated issues, the, the, the cost of transportation, the cost of basic food items and all that, everything is as a result of that. Uh, because it was um, something that was, I believe, not thought out. Uh, you, when you consider the poverty level in this country, there are certain decisions you cannot take. Because that decision led to a, a, a five-fold, sometimes in some instances, six, seven-fold increase in the prices of goods and services. And so the, there is no way you're not going to have the kind of serious economic disparity and increase in poverty that you have in this country. So that is the basis. So the first one is one, the removal of subsidy is the first, you know, uh, that led to all of this. And then the second, that's where I would agree with my colleague from the, uh, the U.S. When he said again, he said something about, you know, the implementation, what you use with the money. Nigerians have not seen anything tangible that they have done with this money because what they were told, what they told us, what they've always told us is that once you remove subsidy, everything, uh, you know, uh, all the monies that are realized will now be used for other social services. So what are these social services that they have been used on? How have the lives of the people improved? It has, we are in an unprecedented situation. People cannot buy medicines. They cannot go to the hospitals. They have to resort to traditional, you know, uh, uh, native doctors. Uh, some of them, you know, uh, have to uh, uh, use uh, agbo and all of that uh, for treatment. Now, that is the level of poverty that we're in today. So everything that the government has done in terms of the economic policies of the government, are you talking about the exchange rate? And the government seems, look, it is not as if the government wanted the Naira to get to 1,500 Naira, 1,600 Naira to the dollar. They did not want it. And they have been doing everything to ensure that there is stability in that, that level and that we have a more favorable exchange rate. It has not worked simply because they don't know what to do. They have tried everything in the lab, in their lab, in their alchemist lab or wherever it is, and they don't seem to know what else to do. And so the lives of Nigerians have depreciated. And you also, then beyond that again, I think uh, I met when I got back, you know, uh, somebody, you are talking about the issue of insecurity. You cannot talk about, you cannot talk about insecurity without talking about the poverty level in this country. And why do you think that most of the countries in Africa, especially in West Africa, have serious security challenges? If it is because of the poverty level, you don't have that in Europe. You know, where, 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 you know, the cost of living is exceedingly, very high. So you don't have all of these issues except fine random shootings here and there and acts of violence that are not related to economic disparities. So these are some of the things that are happening. And so nobody can say, and the president, we shouldn't hold brief because nowadays we tend to have, uh, you know, this desire to want to hold brief for the government at, at, you know, at the end of the day, provide excuses for them. It is not in our place to provide excuses for those who went to the people and said, look, they let me President, and let me governor. Yeah. I have a solution to your problems. And then when they don't provide this 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 solution, we are providing excuses for them. After all, the president said, "Do not provide excuse for me." He yeah. said, "I asked for the job. Do not feel pity for me." So why so, are okay. we suddenly beginning to feel pity for the president? Thank yes. You. So Achike, um, I'm just going to have a follow-up question to that. I mean, we've seen that the presidency has eventually, you know giving Dangote the crew that he's been asking for, so the crew in Naira, do you think we might see any improvement in terms of maybe the, the, the fuel cost coming down with the Dangote refinery, you know, loading up trucks as we speak? There's too much controversy attending the Dangote refinery, too much controversy, where you have, you know, government agencies trying to undermine uh, one of the biggest investments in the history of this country that is supposed to have helped provide some kind of level of cushion for the country if they i mean they become operational yeah these are some of the things and then back and forth you know the yeah dangote say the the stories that we're hearing that dangote wants exclusive lifting of uh, the crude oil by the nmpc and then the nmpc say no we're not going to lift unless it is cheaper than the international price, which makes some sense. You know, and then uh, the independent distributor
doctors also being involved in this uh, back and forth. So there yeah. seems to be a lot of confusion okay. surrounding that. But don't forget what the former spokesman of the president said. Uh, that is uh, the media person of the president said, uh, 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 jury in Gelali, at a time when people were expecting so much hope from the government, you know, about uh, what the NMP, I mean, the Dangote refinery will do to the country, provide exchange, you know, proper, you know, uh, foreign currency for us, uh, uh, reduce uh, 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 the, the disparity between the Naira and the dollar and all of that, and give yeah. us a more favorable exchange rate and all that. So that yeah. was what he said, maybe perhaps not to, uh, to, uh, uh, to lift, to, to allow us uh, with this uh, feeling of uh, euphoria. And uh, he said, look, that there will not be any major change, even in the price of uh, the the, uh, the price of uh, PMX at the pump, mm -hmm. that if there will be, it is going to be exceedingly very, very marginal. And that, so marginal means that you will hardly notice it. So right. if from your question, I'm not sure that we can actually say that Dangote refinery coming on stream will bring any desired change, because I, right. I'm sure, I, I'm not sure that that is what it is get to us now all right uh, we need to hear the thoughts of ibrahim now ibrahim what do you think we need to do as a nation and what do you think the government needs to do because it's becoming really terrible what is the way forward well so so um you know, it's it's uh, this is a problem of multiple layers of course suddenly there is a problem with the presidency and the whole removal thing and what has been done with the removal with, with the removed monies but there's also the question of um, what different aspect of the Nigerian government can do, what are the state government doing, what are the local government doing. And uh, certainly, as Mr. Uh, the, the speaker before me said, things have not been super rosy since the removal. In fact, since the president took power, petrol went from 200 to about 1,000 now, inflation 22% of 23 to about 34% now. And uh, it just seems to be worsening as, as, we, as we proceed. So there is clear, there is clarity in the fact that things cannot continue to go the way it is. If anything, it's going to become much more worse. So the question is then, what we, what do we need to do? We've seen the president go to China. Maybe there is some conversation going on about how how, how the Chinese government can can hear some of uh, relief effort, the Nigerian government's relief effort. But we've seen the president make some of these trips, and nothing has materialized as a consequence. Then, is it then going to be? time for us to question those within the government's, the president's economic circle, who are advising him about the, the, the different economic steps he needs to make. And I know people have talked about uh, Mr. Wally Edu and um, I forgot the name of the other person advising him uh, regarding the economy, uh, but these are brilliant people. It's just, it's just kind of um, interesting to see how things have not worked uh, under these um, intelligent men. So it, it then raised a lot of suspicion about is there a deliberate sabotage of the president's efforts ongoing or if not then what are the new courses the president has to take but i don't think the code the president has, has made any kind of um attitudinal uh change to suggest that he's ready to embrace any suggestion about radical economic reforms apart from those being pushed to him by people in this in his circle so I guess it's, it's it's a matter of humbling yourself as the president and also seeing that you need to not only listen to the people because apparently the government is supposed uh, is, is apparently not listening to us. Uh, not only do you need to listen to the people, but you need to change course radically. You can't keep borrowing money to trying to um, save ourselves. We are raising our debt profile, as you said earlier. The palliative measures are not showing up. The role of subsidy is pretty much... Now, eating up, eating up itself, we agreed at some point that it had to go, but now people are calling for it to return. So it, it just seems as though you need to change course radically. And is the government's ready to change course yeah. and be humble and accept its faults and, and, and add new measures? And that's the question we need to ask ourselves. All right. All right, Shino, thank you very much. Um, uh, pardon me. All right, uh, Ibrahim, thank you very much. Shino, I wanted to get to you quickly. Um, it's, it's it's terrible. In fact, recently, the Lagos State government had to increase the boarding fees from 35000 to 100000 and a lot of people are having an outcry about it. Um, what do you think we can do, especially to the areas that affect our young ones, like education and so many other things? What do you think we can, the government needs to critically do to make sure that the young ones don't suffer? Yeah, I think for me, I think one thing that we need to first, first ask ourselves is that we, we need to basically go back to what they the to all this, like if established subsidy removal and 
transportation of the coal and soil. So we need to go back to, to the major one for me, which is the subsidy remover. The government needs to come to them. There needs to be a lot of transparency and clarity and proper communication. We need to know, I would say paying subsidy? Is subsidy gone? If subsidy is gone, what are the savings that we are getting from these subsidies? With these savings, what's the clear part for it? So there needs to be a proper clarity, clarity and the communication by the government. So because it's just like a, a saying that say, if tough decisions are to be made, however, the government must also lead by example. So if we want to do all this, we, we need to see the actions from the government, not just in saying, but also in doing. But wrapping up your question, we need to first, first start by doing a lot of a policy on imports recently is good. The, the imports relief yeah. policy that government just opened up the borders. Yes, yeah, that is a nice policy, but it should be extended for a longer period so that that will kind of cushion the effect of some prices for the common man. Then also, we need to ask ourselves the sincere question around insecurity as it affects our agricultural produce in this nation. We need to be clear because if we, once we eradicate the insecurity affecting the agricultural produce, that will have a huge relief on our inflation number. Yeah. Because if you look, look at the inflation number, it is a mix of cost pool and demand pool inflation that we are currently having as a country. So, so we need to look at all this dynamism and see how we can start. No, one thing is clear, sincerity and transparency. Okay. So the government needs to come clean and communicate accordingly mm -hmm. and start looking at how to resolve this key area. Agree to yeah. ensure that people, common man, get goods. Then also looking at the infrastructure around agriculture, like the value chain around the agricultural area. Because one major key issue here is that transportation of even the farm produce. So the, there are like so many issues. The farm produce itself, the harvest is not as what it used to be because the farmer can't really do much because of insecurity. insecurity. The little one that they are not still doing, there is no enough road network to even transport them. So the, a lot of damages is even happening from the little one. So all this, we, we have a ripple effect on the supply side and it having huge effect on the price. Mm. So, so it's what I'm saying. So yeah. we, we need to take it one after the other. Transparency and start looking at these key issues. All right. To me, which I see as a low hanging fruit. All right. Uh, we need to quickly fire and sample the final thoughts of Mr. Chike Chude. Um, you, you are very much in tune with what is happening, and I can see from the passion in your voice and the way you speak and the facts that you're stating that you know you're very passionate about passionate about this country. So, what do you think the presidency needs to do urgently? If you were to speak to them directly, what do they need to do urgently to just take off? Take us out of this problem. Look, my brother, I, I don't know what else to what else I can tell them or what I can tell them to do. Look, if it's if it's about movement, they are making movement. But you know, there is a statement, you know, uh, you know something uh, that you know the people describe as uh, making movements, movements without motion. So the government is making movement, but the motion is not, uh, you know. Uh, a proper outcome of that movement. And they have talked about palliatives, they have released lots of money for palliatives, they have done so. These are things that they are doing. So nobody can accuse them actually of doing nothing. But the reality is that whatever it is, is I mean, it's not working because of the fundamentals. They have not addressed the fundamentals. But beyond that, again, is the fact that there is a so social consequence to the poverty and the, you know, in the land. And that consequence is what translated into protest by Nigerians across the country. And so the response of government has not been fantastic. You, you agree that the people, that the baby can, can you know, has a right uh, to, you know, to cry, you know, or that the baby can be beaten, but that the baby should not cry. That is where the problem is. 
the people cried during the protest and the rest and then a lot of them have been arrested as a consequence of that if the police wants to do the investigation and that some people committed certain you know crimes let them we're not saying don't do your job but there are too many innocent people that are under incarceration today that will fuel a lot of public anger against the government you know you so the government needs to show some magnanimity that these people would not have protested because it is just that they are the hunger their stomachs are making demands on them and they are responding to these demands so yeah. the government i will need the government for, for me if you ask me to show some clemency and, and to ensure that people who did not do anything should be removed should, should be released for it immediately that will go a long way in perhaps you know giving the people a different you know vibe about perhaps what the government that the government is ready to embrace you know certain things that are going on within the economy it will be right. good for the government uh right. you know and then and for the other the other the other issues like i said the government needs to go back to the drawing board a lot of the things that the government is doing is absolutely not working and it's not likely going to work unless they go and begin to tackle the fundamentals this issue lastly of everything the world bank tells us of everything the imf tells us has put a lot of countries in trouble look at what is happening with Mili of argentina uh you know he came in with very people would describe it obnoxious economic policies and all that contrary to the uh, dictates of uh, the world bank the imf and he was able to make some successes with a yeah. bit of pain but at least people are seeing you know these things so the government needs to go back and say look perhaps we can do these things differently Thank you very much, Achike Chude. Uh, thank you so much, Olua Shino Akiremi, and of course, Anoba Ibrahim for coming to the program. Thank you.